Now let's discuss about Buddhism in the Southeast Asia. Since 500 BC, Southeast Asia had close contacts with India. And Indian culture was there, had its influence, has great influence on Southeast Asia. The reason for this close contact between Southeast Asia and India was due to the maritime trade routes which linked India for more than thousand years and it was natural that Indian influence was a major factor in bringing the cultures together, it's a bringing the cultural unity rather. The Pali and the Sanskrit language and the Indian script together with Theravada school of the Mahajana Buddhism and Brahmanical religion, that is Hinduism, they were transmitted from direct contact and through sacred texts and Indian literature, such as the Ramayana, the Mahabharata. We find in the art of the Southeast Asian countries, we find the influence of India or Indian art. We find the stories of the great epics of India, Ramayana and Mahabharata are there. So from the 5th century to the 13th century, Southeast Asia witnessed a powerful states which were extremely active in promotion of Buddhism and Buddhist art along with the Hinduism and Hindu art. The main Buddhist influence now came directly by sea from the Indian subcontinent so that the empires essentially followed the Mahayana form of Buddhism, Mahayana faith, and this region was connected with Odisha and no wonder that it became a center of Mahayana Buddhism. In my deliberation, I continuously stress, uh, trace on the importance of Buddhism in Orissa because Orissa played a major role in promoting Buddhism and exporting rather than Buddhism to different parts of the world. So it is no wonder that Orissa, which was, uh, which is the eastern state of India, was a very powerful state with maritime trade relationship with many of the countries in Southeast Asia. And naturally, when we are coming about to know about the state of Buddhism in this area, it must be naturally the Mahajana faith and Vajrayanas, for which Orissa was famous during that time, from the very beginning. Now, that Buddhism was very dominating in this part of the world is known from the fact that an island kingdom was named as Kalinga. There is one state in Southeast Asia is known as Kalinga. It's a, it's a small state in, in southern uh, Indonesia. Uh, it reminds of the connection that this Kalinga had with the ancient Kalinga where Ashoka the Great fought the Kalinga War. Now it was this Kalinga where, from where Buddhism started spreading over all, the, all over the world. And here it is interesting that we find a kingdom of Kalinga. Kingdoms like Funan, the Khmeras Empire, and the Thai kingdom of Sukhothai, and the Srivijaya Empire, Medan kingdom of the Maja, Majapahit were all under the influence of Buddhism. Khmer Empire was dominated the region from 802 to 1431. It was patronizing both Mahayana Buddhism and Hinduism. Under the Khmer, numerous temples, both Buddhist and Hindu, Hindu were built 
in Cambodia and in neighboring Thailand. One of the greatest Khmer kings, Jayavarman VII, who ruled over 18, sorry, 1181 to 1209, built the large Mahajana Buddhist structure at Bayan and Angkor Thom. In the Indonesian island of Java, Indianized kingdoms like the Kalinga Kingdom, because Java had a direct trade relationship with present-day Odisha, which was ancient Kalinga in the 6th, 7th century. It were destinations, these were the destinations for Chinese monks seeking out Buddhist text. The Chinese scholars, monks, they were looking for Buddhist texts and they were visiting these places. The Malayas read from 1600, from 650 to 1377, a maritime empire centered on the island of Sumatra adopted Mahayana and Vajrajam Buddhism and started spreading Buddhism to Java, Malay, and other regions um, they conquered. So it was a big kingdom, so in the small kingdoms, they were having these Buddhist uh, schools or 